photosynthesis, the process by which plants, algae, and some bacteria turn sunlight into energy, powering pretty much everything on Earth. But if we contained the same pigments that they do, could we photosynthesize too? So if you ate a lot of kale, could you go out in the sun and sunbathe and make your own energy? Well, for a while now, scientists have thought that one species of sea slug, Elysia timida, could do just that. Naturally pale, the slug extracts photosynthesizing organelles, known as chloroplasts, from the algae that it eats, and stores them in its body, turning the slug a rather fetching shade of green. Researchers found that these slugs could last for months without food, leading them to believe that they were using the extracted chloroplasts to make their own food from sunlight and photosynthesize themselves. However, a little more recently, some more skeptical scientists took these slugs and put them in the dark with no food, and found that after months, the slugs were still alive, which is weird, because if they were actually surviving by using the chloroplasts to make food from light, then in the dark, they should have died with no food. So without light, there was no way that these guys could be photosynthesizing. But there were some problems with this idea anyways. Chloroplasts don't just exist in a vacuum, they require lots of other accessory molecules from the rest of the algal cell that surrounds them, and it was highly unlikely that the slug could be producing these same needed molecules for the chloroplasts. It was hypothesized that along with the chloroplasts, these slugs might be taking up some DNA from the original algal cells too, and then using that to produce the needed proteins, but as more research was done, this looks to be pretty unlikely. So those photosynthesizing sea slugs are probably not photosynthesizing at all. Okay, so then why did I bring this up anyways? Well, because there's a paper that came out recently in the Journal of Cell Science that indicates and suggests that perhaps mammalian tissues, you know, like us, we're mammals, might be able to take up not the chloroplasts themselves, but broken down pieces or metabolites of chloroplasts that we eat and then put them into our tissues and then use them to photosynthesize. It's crazy, I know, but I think it's an interesting paper, so let's step through it. So the researchers hypothesized that maybe the broken down metabolites of these chloroplasts could travel to cells in the mammalian body and there work with the mitochondria in those cells. Now, mitochondria, if you remember, are sort of the powerhouses of the cells. They produce cellular energy in the form of ATP. So the first thing the researchers did was they took these broken down chlorophyll metabolites and they mixed them with mouse liver mitochondria. They then exposed this mixture to light and judged how much ATP was produced. And they found, surprisingly, that mitochondria mixed with this metabolite and exposed to light produced more ATP than mitochondria alone that were exposed to light. Very interesting. Next, to replicate what might happen with sort of normal mitochondria levels in a tissue, they took mouse brains, homogenized them, mixed them with this metabolite, and then put a light on them. And once again, they found that there was more ATP produced when the mouse brains were mixed with this metabolite and had a light shown on them than when the mouse brains were just exposed to light on their own. Very strange. But in a real animal, these metabolites wouldn't just be mixed up with the tissue, they would have to travel there through the digestive system. So next, researchers fed mice a chlorophyll-rich diet and then looked for chlorophyll metabolite-like fluorescence in tissue samples from the body to see whether or not these metabolites could be broken down in the stomach and then distributed into tissues. And what they found was actually that they could see this chlorophyll-like fluorescence in the brain and in fat and in some gut tissues, which is really pretty crazy. The researchers also found that this chlorophyll-like fluorescence localized to the mitochondria as their hypothesis suggested that they would, and they also went on to do a whole lot of biochemical assays to see whether or not this extra ATP produced in these samples would actually be coming through biochemical pathways related to photosynthesis, and their findings did support their hypothesis that these chlorophyll-derived pigments might be traveling to the mitochondria and somehow working with the mitochondria to turn the light into energy. It's really crazy. It's really crazy. So, do I buy it? Maybe. I think the idea is really cool, and I think they've got some really cool preliminary findings, but I noticed in the paper that they said that they found these chlorophyll-like pigments traveling to brain tissue and fat tissue and gut tissue, but they didn't mention anything about the skin, which is actually the tissue that is most exposed to light in the mammalian body. 
Now they did make the argument that light does travel through your skin and through your skull and they actually made the very interesting point that on a clear day the amount of light illuminating your brain would allow you to comfortably read a printed book which okay all right that's a lot of light traveling through but i wonder if it would be enough really to make any sort of noticeable difference if in fact these chlorophyll like pigments were working with the mitochondria to produce any energy would the atp that they produced even be relevant on a biological scale i mean how much chlorophyll would you have to eat to actually get enough of these pigments to your mitochondria to make a difference in the amount of ATP that they produced? They also found a really weird result in that first test where they mixed straight mitochondria with this metabolite, that if they added too much of the metabolite, the ATP production actually dropped back down to baseline levels, which is weird. You would think if you added more of this pigment, you would either reach some sort of plateau of ATP production or ATP production would keep increasing but they found that if you added too much chlorophyll, it went back down. And that seems kind of sketchy to me. So am I gonna go out and eat a big salad and lie out in the sunlight and get all of my energy that way? No, and I don't think you should either. But do I think that this is a really cool hypothesis and some interesting preliminary findings that should be looked into more? Yeah, I think I do. Go forth, do science and eat your vegetables.